Wow, it's been quite a while. It's been, I think, a little over four months now since my last video. But anyway, so I've been gone because of school. School ended a while back, but then I was gone because of work. And then I was gone because of a bunch of vacations the family went on, a bunch of just traveling. So I've just been busy. I was going to make a train generator. And I thought the other day, well, if I'm going to do all this work to make it anyways, I might as well just ask on Twitter and see if people are interested in a train generator. So I made a poll, simple yes-no poll, if I should do a seven-ish episode series on me making a train generator. And the response was overwhelmingly positive. So thank you guys for that. Here we are. Um, it won't be a tutorial series necessarily. There's so much to cover in terrain generation. Like I have basically everything figured out except for like large multi multi chunk structures. Not like just a couple chunks, but like dozens of chunk structures, like villages and strongholds and mine shafts. Um, but I have the uh, smaller chunk structures like uh, dungeons and I, I do have things like just general terrain generation biomes, rivers, uh, rivers not so much, but rivers are getting there, uh, caves, stuff like that, I'm all good. So I will show you how I'm going to navigate through all that stuff. It's a fairly complicated process, not that many algorithms necessarily, I will make it harder on myself, but um, a simple terrain generator you should be able to do with very little experience in bucket specifically maybe some java experience because but bucket isn't really required for this project it's just what i'm going to be using it on most people make train generators with like forge and stuff for the extra blocks but i have a kind of a final end goal for this so since the very first episode will be very simple just making a void world terrain generator we're not going to do just here's the code here's how it looks as it for this this video because it'll take like 30 seconds to do that so I'm gonna if you've never done Java development with, for Bucket before I'm gonna show you how I do it when I'm on my own uh, when I'm doing my own projects and how I'm going to set up this project so the very first thing you need to do is you need to ensure that you have a uh, Java development kit installed um, all these links will be in the description this page and not um, this one specifically because this page changes all the time so I'm just going to link to the general download page and then you'll have to click on this and then download the latest Java development kit, install it, run it, make sure it's good. And then you'll need to go and get Spigot build tools and build a Spigot jar. Um, you probably have already done this if you're actually like going to follow along, but just in case you need to, here's a page you need to get, get, in to get installed in order to actually run the build tools jar. They don't need to follow the instructions here. Um, typically something will go wrong. I think it went wrong for me the first time I did this. So you'll need to change some one of your Git settings somewhere in here and then you'll have to go along from there. Once you have your spigot directory and your spigot jars created, of course, after a couple of years of doing this, I, they really spam your folder here, but um, it will look a lot nicer than this, trust me. Trust me on that one. Um, I use Eclipse for my ID. Not for any specific reason, necessarily, but I do like it. Uh, but apparently Eclipse Neon came out when I was on vacation, so I'm not actually going to be using Eclipse Neon. I'm going to be using Mars for at least the first bit of this series. Um, there isn't much of a difference, I'm pretty sure, between the two. So you'll need to download and... Actually, I don't think you have to install it, necessarily. I'm pretty sure you can just um, unzip it. And then I'm going to be using Maven. Maven is just a dependency manager. I like it... Not really for any specific reason. I don't actually like it specifically. Maven is a horrible thing, and I, I just can't get Gradle to work properly on my computer is actually what's going on here. So rip that. Um, I'll be using Maven, though, because it does work. But still a pain in the ass. Um, make sure to follow the installation instructions correctly. It is the most complicated thing to install. Everything else here is just press a button or type in a single command in build tools case. Um, but here, this is a little bit more involved. Not super involved, but a little bit more involved. So once you have all that installed, you'll need to go to Eclipse. I have a whole bunch of garbage projects over here, so don't worry about that. I'm going to create a new Maven project. Uh, I'll just be a simple project. Yep. Uh, yep. Use default workspace location. We're going to call it... I have a palm here open, so it's very easy to see this. <laughs> so my group ID is always mc.lfpt, and then I'm going to call this project experimental level, experimental terrain. Type. Um, all this looks good. No parent project. Yeah, we'll just do that. Okay, so it'll create the project for us, the Maven project. Very empty, nothing in it so far. We'll delete the test directories because I don't plan on having any tests in this project specifically, although I believe I will use some tests in another project related to uh, what we're doing here. Okay. So, at the very beginning here, nothing. 
in our palm file, but we need to add spigot at the very least. So here is well, we'll link to in the description to set up a Maven repository instead of the Maven uh, palm file for the spigot repository. So basically, all you need to do is just copy this. Except for we don't actually need this uh, the bucket API. We can take the spigot one directly. Okay, right. so you should be able to see the spigot jar here. Okay, so we're not quite done here. We have to change. Pretty sure this will build correctly. Unfortunately, Maven for some reason, despite providing a uh, resources folder where you put the, uh, the plugin YAML file into, it doesn't actually support it by default. So you have to purposefully add this these lines here in order to get it to completely compile the plugin YAML file. Anyways, we'll call this experimental terrain. The main file will be load startup. We need the plugin to be loaded at startup. That way it will actually successfully override the default train generator. Uh, I don't actually have that set up yet. Okay, I'll set that up. Make a new class, a new uh, package. We will make a new file. I have to extend Java plugin like normal. And we don't actually need any of the regular methods you would have in one of these. Um, we don't need any on command, we don't need any on enable, we don't need any of that. All we have to do is override one method I don't exactly remember. Another simple class here, terrain generator, we're going to extend chunk generator, I'm pretty sure is what it's called. So in this class we're going to override two methods. It's a method that returns a double array of shorts. It's called generate extra block sections, I'm pretty sure. It takes uh, like a bunch of parameters, worlds, worlds, uh, random, random, int x, int z. And then biome grid grid. Okay. So this is the method that does the actual train generation. Um, in here, you could successfully put in basically whatever you want, and you would somehow manage to successfully get any train generation patterns you want. Fortunately, that's a lot of work. Um, so for now, we're just going to return an empty array of shorts. We put zero and zero into both of them. Public list. Block populators. We call it get default populators for our world. World. I'll um, import lists and we will import this and we're going to return empty list. Okay. Let's import this too. So, our train generator is done. Oh, I have to, whoops. The parameter is the type there. Whoops. Okay. Okay, so like that, our train genera generator is done. Um, it is literally just 22, oh no, we're, no, we're not quite done yet. Whoops, I forgot about this. Um, we have to override one method here, not on load or on enable or on command or anything like that, but rather chunk generator, it returns a chunk generator, it returns a chunk generator, get default world generator. And then it brings in a string called world name and string ID. Um, right, we're just going to completely replace the world generator, so we'll just return new terrain generator. Just like that. Okay, now our terrain generator is done. Total three lines of code, that's it. Uh, a little bit more than that, 36. If, if you exclude the palm file, which that's not the right one anyways, um, and the YAML file. But anyways, it's a really, really simple project. Um, making a void generator. The code itself is very simple. Okay, so we need to go to experimental train and uh, to the workspace file. Then we'll do maven package. Oops, that's not maven row. And I'll build. And now we have our very first train generator right here in the target directory. Um, that's all there is to generating it. Now we have to set the server correctly. Very simple to make your own uh, server. Take Simply take the spigot jar that was given to you here. The very first one in the main directory. We had the build tools in. And put it into its own directory and have this start script. Uh, remove this. This is not necessary. Um, but this, I'll just put this in the description. 
Uh, I'm adding this remove directory just so this way it will regenerate the train every single time it runs. Uh, I'll just delete the world folder. World folder. Sounds good. Great. Now I just click the start script and it will load everything. So at the very beginning, you'll need to do this. Um, I didn't need to do this because I already had the bucket YAML file, but at the very beginning, you. Oh, I can actually. <laughs> okay. Um, at the very beginning, you will need to do this. You need to run it once at least. Because you need the bucket YAML file, you need to add at the very bottom or whatever you want. Worlds. Then the name of the world you want to overwrite, which in my case is world. And then you want to type. And then you want to say generator in the name of the plugin. So it's going to be called terrain generator. No, is that what I called it? No, I called it experimental terrain. Okay. And then you want to add the plugin to the plugin folder. And it should be good to go. Did you guys find the stupid mistake I made? Because if you did, then good for you. <laughs> I didn't. I forgot to change the package in the main here in the plugin YAML file. Whoops. Anyways, let's go into local server. And it should be a void world completely. Yep, it is. I uh, don't think I have essentials installed, so I have to manually type out game mode C. Yep, okay. All right, perfect. We have a void world. Nothing spawns. Um, it's completely empty. Ah, I like how it's just a sudden transition at 60. Like, it doesn't make any sense. 60Y, I should say. And so just like that, that's all it takes to make a train generator. Um, very simple one, as in like the nothingest version of it. But it technically works. Um, so, from now on, basically all we'll be doing is modifying this method. This method right here and this method right here. Nothing else in the entire train generation spot of bucket actually needs to be messed with. Um, these two methods are the only things you need to actually but that's literally it. it's just these two methods are all it takes and overriding this one which we won't change um is all it takes to make a train generator and i hate the system so i'm going to be writing my own api over it because i can't stand this um it, it will be it'll be gone as quickly as possible i'm pretty sure by the end of the next episode i'll have an api written just to completely override everything about this system because it is stupid let me tell you that but that's it so next time we'll go over um well obviously we'll generate terrain that's the very first thing we'll do. And um, I'm not actually sure what else we'll be doing. Um, we might be getting into block populators, like what's shown right here. Or I might do biomes or something else. I'm not sure. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Um, I'm going to post the source code for this on GitHub. Uh, I'll have different branches for each episode so you can see how it progresses if you want to. Or just save the state. That way you can look at it if you want. But that's about it. So thank you all for watching. And I will see you all next time.